Hey, thanks a lot for tuning in today. My call sign is Blitz, and I am honored that you have stopped by to spend some of your finite, precious time with me. So, in this video, we are going to demystify knife fighting, focusing on one simple, yet very effective and brutal combo that anybody can learn, I'm talking anybody, like with an IQ over 70. We'll also look at weapons and we'll dig deep into target anatomy because listen, let's face it, if you are unfortunate enough to find yourself in a situation where you have to use your blade or an improvised weapon in self-defense, then hell, you better know how to end that fight with a freaking quickness because the odds are, studies have shown that everybody's going to get cut and probably everybody's really going to get hurt. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So a few months back, I got an opportunity to get a one-on-one -on -one beginner class on knife fighting, and I distilled what I learned in that class into three main categories, weapons, target anatomy, and the sequence that I learned. So let's go ahead and get started. I guess, uh, I guess we'll get started with weapons. So here's a bit of the collection that was used for this instructional. And now, real quick, guys, I just have to point out that it is important that, you know, please note that some of these tools may not be legal in your area, so always follow local laws when in doubt. And yeah, maybe even uh, in the case of this guy here, maybe even common sense should play a, play a bit of a role, right? Now, let's go ahead and get a closer look at these tools. And you may notice, as we kind of scan them, that they can all perform the same operation, stabbing penetration with either the knife there, or the chopsticks, right? So this shared common use is the foundation of the ice pick methodology. The idea here is simple. No matter what we have available to work with, we can replicate and execute with anything remotely close to a knife. You know, you can think about a screwdriver as being a great example here. It's cheap, legal anyways, you can buy it anywhere, and anything that I can do with a screwdriver, I should be able to do with a knife and so on, right? You get the idea. Now, keeping that in mind, let's go ahead and look at this first blade here. This is a knife from Grimfrost, and it does might, you know, it, it might strike you as kind of like a bushcraft blade utility knife, and yeah, indeed, it's good for fieldcraft. You know, it could easily, you know, be tossed in a bushcraft kit, and I'm, you know, I'm betting it could do a proper good job of stabbing. But if we think about it from a position of fighting, you know, it has this bright surface that can reflect light, which can be a giveaway when you're trying to get your weapon out and use it. And then you'll probably notice this retention hook. Now, this can really be nice to give a, uh, a, a good solid chopping motion, but the hook can get in the way of uh, smooth transitions, right? So yeah, for sure, great knife. Can it be deadly? Absolutely, but it's better suited for utility work. This next blade is a great example of a daily carry, and after I saw it, and got to mess around with a little bit, I ended up picking it up for my own daily carry. It's a super nice blade. And you know, it really is the perfect size for concealment. Discreet, blacked out finish, so there's no concerns about the blade picking up any sunlight. And there's a very secure grip here, thanks to this wrap. So even if blood and sweat are, are you know getting into the area, it's gonna be a lot less slippery than G10 scales. And two, take note, this is important. This is a single edge blade, which can go anywhere. A lot of regions might not allow double-edged blade, double-edged blades, so why not just have an everyday carry blade that can, you know, pretty much be good to go. I guess I would say throughout the United States and maybe the UK. Hmm. Then there's a classic ice pick when you need to pick lots of ice. And look at that handle, guys. You can really get a good death grip on this. There's obviously like almost zero maintenance, I guess, no maintenance, and it's something you can throw away and you can punch through level one armor or people wearing heavy clothes or whatever. This thing is going wherever you stick it. Of course, chopsticks can be a very viable weapon in the ice pick methodology or a blunt pencil. You know, you go ahead and load, load your thumb up right here, curl around the fingers and you kind of go with a hammering strike, right? Kind of the same, the, uh, the same style that you would use with like a screwdriver. And you're thinking in your mind when you're doing this, you know, can I slide this in the ear, um, you know, maybe in the eyeball and yeah, it's just, Think about that. I mean, it's a one-time use only. It's gonna break off or whatever, but the damage it can cause in the moment of use is huge. All right, so um, what else? <laughs> Broken tip of a training arrow? You can definitely use that. I mean, literally, guys, anything can be made into a weapon. I mean, even like, this is nice right here, the Sharpie that's made from G10, right? And it's just Sharpie, right? It doesn't rust, and it goes through metal detectors just fine.
purpose of keeping it simple, we're gonna focus on two broad categories, arteries and organs. And yes, right, yes, for sure, there are other targets such as tendons, but once again, we're keeping it very simple and basic here. Now, if we're talking about arteries, you know, there's, there, there's a few of them, right? But out of that list, the ones to keep in mind are the ones that are most commonly available or accessible, and the ones that do the most damage, and that's obviously going to be the carotid and femoral artery. The carotid is just such an easy win, right? Because it's close to the surface and it takes very little effort to slice or cut. And if there's one on each side of the neck, right? So you got options like wherever your stance is or wherever you're placed from your, you know, from the, the other person in your target, you got options. And when that gets cut, imagine a timer kicking off and you got less than 60 seconds before it's game over, right? Um, I would guess probably, I mean, with with you know the timer going off and you got 60 seconds as the blood is just spurting out, I would say this is probably the highest value target or one of the highest value targets that you could go for on the human body, right? Almost like, like a secret kill switch <laughs> or something like that, right? So now let's consider how this works in the ice pick methodology because you're not going to be slashing as much as it's a stabbing motion combined with a post penetration ensuring maximum damage as you basically just scoop the blade out. Imagine ripping and tearing and pulling with your hips in the process, right? And that's gonna create a lot of damage, no doubt about it. You're not just pulling, you're not just getting the blade in and pulling it nicely out. You are tearing things up on the way out. Now that's our upper target selection. Now let's go ahead and move on to the femoral artery, which is about the same. Obviously, the heart keeps pumping and then you're done, right? Uh, the preference here is to hit the artery high up near the groin, and since this is a lower target area, imagine this being a sneaky type of defensive violence, right? You're getting that blade into that space and, and just ripping apart that artery while the other person is occupied by punches or an eye gouge or you know whatever the case is. That covers the two main arteries of interest. Now we'll go ahead and move on to organs, and once again, we're only gonna you know we're gonna keep it simple, and we're only focusing on two the eyes and the lung. Indeed, also the brain can be a good target, but if we're talking about smaller concealed blades here, you might not have the length to get through to the skull. We wanna look for the easy wins, and those, those really are the eyes and lungs, and those are two favorites, right? Think about this, you go deep enough in the eye, you're gonna get the brain, but let's just think about just a scratch on the eye. Even a forceful jab or a poke in there can cause like temporary blindness or the eyes could be gouged out. So, I mean, in terms of it being a great organ to hit, I can't think of anything much better. Now, of course, yes, you're gonna say maybe that this is a smaller target, but I would say that like, even if I miss that, any damage to the face is going to get an immediate response. And, and then too, yeah, before I forget, yeah, um, eyeballs are great to hit. Ears can also be a good option. Smaller target as well, but if you train and drill these sequences and these moves, odds are you're gonna be able to hit your target in real life when it matters the most. Now once you've finished blinding your opponent, just go for the lungs, right? Go, go for the kill. Now keep in mind there might be bone in the way, but even, I mean, let's think about this. Let's say, let's say you only get one lung to collapse. That's gonna drop the person right off the bat. I mean, with the arteries, they can still do stuff, right? I mean, as the blood is spurting out, they could maybe still get a weapon and shoot you or, or stab you or whatever the case is. With this, it's going to drop the guy. I don't care what level of methamphetamines he's on, right? They're not gonna get up and do anything. And then, of course, you know, that's basically where you would want to um, still make sure you have that space, still make sure you have that distance, scan the area for threats, and then make the appropriate phone calls, right? Because um, that's gonna be a mess to clean up. But there's that, right? Where do you hit it? Uh, two viable ways that we looked at is through the armpit or right underneath the shoulder blade, and we'll cover part of that with the drill that we're gonna look at. But So after talking about weapons and target anatomy, we move on to the drill, and yes, I do have to say this, only practice this stuff with a training knife. Stupid people exist, so I, sorry, I just have to say that. And then of course, yeah, listen, it's also very important to keep in mind that there are legal ramifications from using your knife to defend yourself in real life. Who would have thought, right? So have a plan for what happens after the violence, right? Because if somebody's dead, the odds are very high that you're probably gonna go to jail just until the cops can figure out what actually happened. And you'll need a lawyer number handy and so on, right? So just, you know, keep that in mind. But that being said, 
Remember in the beginning and kind of all the way throughout this video, I've said the system is simple, easy to train, and brutally effective. And now we're gonna look at exactly why. This is the jab, grab, and stab. Now in just literally a few short moves with very simple footwork, you go off the center line, turning your opponent while slipping your weapon between his ribs. And we just talked about the organs that we go for, the eyes, you know, we're going, you know, we're trying to hit the face. So think about that. Watch how that jab goes off, right? And then watch how the rest of the sequence works out. So let's watch that again this time in slow motion. Now imagine executing this move under stress in maybe a unfamiliar environment. You would want it to be simple and easy to execute. And for me, within 15 minutes of drilling the sequence back and forth, it felt natural, it felt smooth, the footwork is simple, and it really is the least number of steps that you need to take to close the gap with the jab, then get on the inside and work in your blade. And who knows, I mean, once you're in here, in the blind spot, you might attack a completely different target area. There's lots of options, and that's what's cool about the ice pick methodology is you have options to work with, right? You can work with tons of different weapons and you have a solution to multiple problems, not multiple solutions to multiple problems, which means more training and more knowledge and all that kind of good stuff. And you know, obviously guys too, another thing that's great about this methodology and this sequence, it's very hard to get wrong. You can do it at home, it pays off quickly, and it will indeed work on people with armor or heavy clothing. Okay, so there you have it guys, the jab, grab, and stab. And to be clear, you could train that and become really good at that and you go up against somebody who knows Kali or another knife fighting artist who trains it all the time, you're probably gonna get your ass kicked. But against your average person on the street, it's definitely gonna be effective. And this, the, the ice pick methodology is field tested. You know, it's not like something that was cooked up in a lab somewhere where people spar and train with it but haven't really been able to deploy in real life. This is simple, brutal, effective stuff. You see what it is. It's a slash to set up a penetration, but to finish the fight, the focus is always on penetration into those vital organs. So, I'd love to hear what you guys think of the ice pick methodology. For me, being new to knives pretty much, I thought it was a pretty cool thing to learn and a very simple and effective combo for me to my to add to my arsenal of skills. So, let me know what you think down there in the comments. I have also put a pin post with a list of my favorite fighting knives. And also, guys, listen, P.S. If you didn't know already, I've been basically banned from all social media except YouTube where I try to be really, really nice guy. But I am over there on Gab and I'm posting tons of content, you know, based on like, you know, like all my workouts that I do, lots of funny memes and other content that you're just not gonna get anywhere else. Um, definitely not here or anywhere else. I think I'm, am I in any other social media? Nope, that's it. So go check me out on Gab. I'd love to see you over there. Let's start a conversation and I will see you next time. And if you haven't done so already and you like this video, click like button and subscribe. See you next time. Hey, you still there? Cool. Then don't forget to check out our website located on the interwebs at thesurvivaloutpost.com. We are designed and optimized for hard use, for the self-reliant who talk less and hustle more. Thanks to our international connections, you get first access to unique and innovative products from around the world. This is the gear that will give you that edge you need in a survival situation, or if you're just trying to keep the lights on when the power goes out. Any content mentioned in this video is linked up down there in the pin post, and be sure to watch the suggested videos for more real-world survival training and knowledge.